the Champions League draw, the most exciting pick a name from a hat game in all of soccer. Bids for Champions League glory and eternal fame are made or broken here. My February, March, and April are lost because of the results of this draw. More important than the lottery and more influential than European parliamentary elections, probably the most important event in recorded human history. Yeah, I know, I, I kind of hate me too for writing that. But in all seriousness, the Champions League draw kicks off a month or two months of speculation and predictions, the thing we as soccer fans live off of in the slow winter and summer months. So in the spirit of the holidays, here's my Christmas present to all of you. A comprehensive ranking of each of the 16 clubs vying for European immortality. Enjoy and happy arguing for the next two months. Number 16, Napoli. Someone had to take the wooden spoon here, and when the quality of the football in the Champions League is as good as it is today, the distance between number one and number 16 is smaller than it's ever been. But even then, it seems like Napoli would really struggle to make up that distance. They've just fired their manager, they're seven points off a European place and 11 points off a Champions League spot. Man United may have been able to bank on winning the Europa League to book a Champions League spot and forgo the league entirely, but that's not happening. Uh, in Serie A and in the Champions League. There's too much turmoil around Napoli right now, and running into the buzzsaw that is Barcelona in the round of 16 won't help things. Number 15, Lyon. Another squad that has to buckle down in league play just to return to the Champions League next season. The only reason they're ahead of Napoli is because there's less turmoil at the club, and they have a slightly easier draw in Juventus. The margin between these bottom clubs is razor thin. Lyon emerged as the second place team from probably the weakest group and, despite stealing a point from Leipzig, have looked weak in matches against Benfica and Zenit. Number 14, Valencia. Valencia actually have a better European track record than half the teams in this draw. And this is no disrespect to them. But they're a club that has been streaky and again, they'll be hurt by their lack of depth relative to the super clubs in the Champions League when they have to fight for the European life in La Liga. This is also me putting faith in Atalanta, a team whose eventual ranking will prove I actually really like them this season. Number 13, Manchester City. Here it is, the most controversial pick on my ranking, so at least we're getting it out of the way early. Man City seems to be criminally low on this list, but let me explain. This is entirely based on my complete lack of belief that City can beat Real Madrid in the round of 16. First off, City's fixture schedule is absolute mayhem come February. Off a two-week international break, City have to take on Leicester just four days before their home tie against Real, then get a luxurious two-day rest before taking on Arsenal at the Emirates. Then, they have the second leg of the Manchester Derby, a tie they'll be desperate to win after being embarrassed by a struggling United squad at Old Trafford, before the return leg at the Bernabeu with a match at Burnley in the middle. That adds up to three games in ten days, and then they get rewarded with back-to-back -back ties against Chelsea and Liverpool. City are closer to dropping out of Champions League contention than they are to winning the league, and they have matches against every other team in the top six in a two-month period. And all of that is ignoring the fact City has been ravaged by injuries, specifically in the defensive third, and Real Madrid scored 14 goals in a Champions League group that included PSG. Is this Real Madrid's best year? No. But City's spot on this list says more about the citizens' inconsistency and absolute nightmare of a fixture schedule than it does about Real Madrid. Number 12, Tottenham Hotspur. It's easy to see how one could say I'm biased against Spurs. I made a video a month ago about how their new manager is destined to fail, and now I'm putting them behind Atalanta on this list. I have friends that are Spurs fans, and I know they're composing their angry messages to me right now. But while my City pick was based around the fixture list, my placement of Spurs here is specifically about what kind of style of play works in the Champions League these days. Last year's winners Liverpool put up 13 goals in the knockout stage, including that dramatic comeback from 3-0 down against Barcelona. Spurs put up 11 on their way to the finals in six matches. In Jose Mourinho's four matches against European caliber teams so far, Spurs have scored eight, and four of those came against Olympiacos. My issue with Spurs is my core issue with Mourinho. They're too defensive, and the game has moved past that. There were 577 goals scored in the Champions League last year, over 20 more than the total from just 10 years ago. When Mourinho last won the Champions League with Inter in 2010, there were 559 goals scored. 
Real Madrid became three-time defending champs on the back of an explosive offense. Liverpool absolutely turned on the Jets against one of the greatest clubs in history to put up four goals in a must-win match when you knew Barcelona was playing defensively. Are Spurs capable of doing that? I wouldn't bet on it. Number 11, Atalanta. Atalanta narrowly misses out on my top 10, much as I really, really wanted to put them there. They kind of resemble Ajax from last season, an oft-overlooked squad that possess serious European-level talent and a nothing-to-lose attitude. They started their Champions League campaign incredibly weak, but finished incredibly strong, nabbing seven points from their final three matches while outscoring Man City, Dynamo, and Shakhtar 6-1 and drawing at the Etihad. But at the end of the day, it's their Serie A results that scared me out of putting them any higher. 3-1 loss to Juventus, draws with Napoli and Juventus again, and a 2-0 loss to Cagliari stand out to me in the worst way. I want to believe in Atalanta, but I'm afraid their good fortune, both in Italy and in Europe, is based more around a weak schedule than the ability of this team to make a run to Turkey for the finals. Number 10, Atletico Madrid. Barely making the top 10 is Diego Simeone's men. I'm a big fan of Simeone's style of play, and I credit him very much with ushering in the post-Guardiola style of play that Jurgen Klopp has used to achieve Champions League glory. But now that the two men face off, it's clear to see Atletico as an aging team battered by both injury and inexperience. Jao Felix's incandescent talent aside, Atleti's top scorer in all competitions is Alvaro Morata, and he's got eight goals and 19 appearances between the Champions League and La Liga. Simeone's men have been lethargic for large stretches of their season, struggling to find goals and relying on subpar performances from Jan Oblak and Jose Jimenez to try to keep goals out. The team, as it's constructed now, will be torn to shreds by Liverpool, a team that could have the Premier League halfway in their pocket by the time the first tie even takes place. Number 9, PSG. Now this is a pick that is based more around history than it is about PSG's ability in this given Champions League. Every year we fall into the trap of looking at PSG and falling in love with their talent and ability. Players like Kylian Mbappe and Neymar capture the imagination and hold your gaze the entire time they're on the field. But year after year, PSG continues to show they're all smoke and mirrors. They play in a league that's so weak we can't accurately assess how good they really are. They haven't lost since September and beat down second place Marseille 4-0 just six weeks ago. Sure, they put up strong results in the Champions League group stages finishing in first with 16 points in a group that contained Real Madrid. But don't forget, they finished first in a group with eventual champions Liverpool last year and put up 15 points and a staggering plus 21 goal difference in 2017 only to get massacred by Real Madrid in the round of 16. This is not a squad capable of winning in the Champions League and until they put up any kind of convincing CL knockout stage result, you won't be able to convince me otherwise. Number 8, Bayern Munich. The more astute among you will have noticed that of the three German teams to advance to the knockout stage, I've slotted Bayern Munich the lowest, though they're all in the top 10, which says a lot. But Bayern Munich's position is actually for a very similar reason to PSG's, a squad with immeasurable talent that has become infatuated with their own ability. It's not to say that players themselves have become complacent, rather the board has been resistant to shaking things up. While Munich has maintained a stranglehold over the Bundesliga for the best part of the last decade, the margin between them and the other teams is closing fast, as evidenced by the fact they sit in 5th currently with 6 points separating them from both 1st and 9th. The Bundesliga is extremely competitive, and while I've dropped several squads for having packed fixture schedules, I continue to hold the belief that the Bundesliga's fewer fixtures and gap between the top and bottom teams actually help its top teams stay fit and in a competitive mindset while not murdering them like the Premier League fixture schedule. All that being said, I've become disillusioned with Bayern. They've looked slow at times, and their defense has been flat out poor in Bundesliga competition. Yes, they've breezed through their Champions League group on the back of the best offense and goal differential in the competition. But that's mostly due to Robert Lewandowski running up the score against teams that could just not stop him. Even though Lewandowski is the soccer equivalent of the Terminator, Munich's defense more resembles the resistance, while their opponents are Skynet. Much like PSG, while there's a lot to love, they'll have to show me something to get me to believe in the cause. Number 7. Chelsea The Blues sit far higher on my rankings than they probably sit in many of yours. They've been straight up poor in Premier League competition, and they have consecutive matches against Leicester, Man U, and Spurs before they begin their campaign against Bayern. 
In fact, if you held a gun to my head and made me pick, I'd probably say Bayern actually beats Chelsea over two legs in the round of 16. So why on earth would I put Chelsea a spot higher? Frankly, it's because the highs of Chelsea make you really believe in them. Chelsea were given a very under-the-radar group in terms of difficulty and managed to outlast last year's Cinderella Ajax and haven't lost since their first game, a narrow defeat to Valencia. If we're being honest, there's a lot to love about Chelsea when they're on. And weirdly, it's their inconsistency that makes me believe in them more than teams like PSG or Bayern Munich. While those giants have a ceiling that we know about, we actually don't know where Chelsea's ceiling might be. This might be my bias here, but I see Christian Pulisic as one of the best string pullers in the Champions League right now, and I'm not the only one when you read his match reports. He's an unorthodox player, and when paired with the electric Tammy Abraham, who's quietly put up 11 goals in 16 Premier League appearances, and up-and-coming stars like Callum Hudson-Odoi, Fikayo Tomori, and Mason Mount, the sky's the limit. The betting man would not touch Chelsea with a 10-foot pull, but with no money on the line, I'm perfectly comfortable saying Chelsea's ceiling is the quarterfinals or even beyond. Number 6. Juventus Basically, from this point on, the margin between number 6 and number 1 might as well be a coin toss. Decisions like this knock years off our lives and money out of our bank accounts. But we begin with the old lady, the most successful team in Italy's history, which features the most decorated player in Champions League history. So how are there five teams ahead of them? Frankly, it's because I'm so unconvinced by their Champions League group, I don't believe they're as good as they appear to be. They put up the second most points of any squad in the group stages and collected 15 points from their final five matches. But I remain unconvinced because, to be brutally honest, they played in the worst group in the entire tournament. We've already discussed Atletico's shortcomings and they were a bad matchup for Juve anyway. Add Bayer Leverkusen who are seventh in the Bundesliga right now and Lokomotiv Moscow who lost all five of their last five group games and sit 11 points off of first in the Russian league and you wonder how Juventus only managed 12 points and a relatively pedestrian plus eight goal difference, at least compared to fellow super clubs Bayern Munich, Man City, and PSG. Still, Juventus has some of the most dangerous players in the competition, including the man that has put away more teams in the Champions League than Father Time himself. They don't excel at anything, but they aren't explicitly weak at anything either. Their fate will largely be decided by the draws they have going forward, but their depth and versatility puts them in solid position to deal with whatever may come out of that spinning ball. Number 5. Borussia Dortmund Dortmund come into any Champions League with a built-in advantage. You'd rather play in a hurricane on a sailboat after being hit by a plane than play in front of the yellow wall on a Champions League night. Signal Iduna Park is legendary, and for good reason. Dortmund hasn't lost there since last season's Champions League round of 16. They've clipped the wings of the mighty, taking down Serie A leaders Inter and managing a draw against Barcelona. But the almost mythical stature of the famed yellow wall is not the only reason Dortmund finishes so high on my list. They match up really well against a lot of teams that made it through the group stage. Their offense is too balanced for star-heavy teams like PSG and Juventus to stop. They've showed their quality against possession-based teams like Barca and Man City. And they have the discipline to lock down the midfield against more straightforward squads like Liverpool and Real Madrid. Much like Juventus, they excel at nothing, but they have no explicit weaknesses. Like Chelsea, they're inconsistent and hard to figure out. But they're younger and hungrier than Juventus, at least judging by their Bundesliga results, where they finished off multiple squads by four or five goals. And they're more consistent than Chelsea. Absolute travesty last month at Bayern aside. At the end of the day, what there is to like about Dortmund outweighs what there is to dislike, and they're the classic no-one-wants-to-see-them team. Number 4. Real Madrid Los Blancos have absolutely transformed themselves since Zinedine Zidane's second tenure. When Zizou famously led them to three Champions League trophies, they were the unstoppable offensive juggernaut seemingly scoring at will and were perfectly comfortable winning games 4-3 or 5-4. They gave up over two goals a game, at least in La Liga, but made up for it by putting up goal totals so large you'd be forgiven for thinking they were a major league batting average. This year though, it's all different. Yes, they have the second best offense in La Liga in terms of goals scored, but that's a bit like having the second highest rated polka song on the billboard charts. You're not exactly competing with Grammy winners. The effect of this is the goals have become concentrated on one man. Karim Benzema has scored 16 goals between La Liga and the Champions League. Sergio Ramos is second with six. They don't assist much, meaning they have a lot of set pieces, penalties, and rebounds. All of that is true, yet Real remained fourth on the list here for two reasons. 
a team sheet you'd have to be blind not to love, and a manager with more Champions League success than almost any other manager in the game right now. Zidane knows how to win this tournament, and Madrid have Galactico-level talent at all over the field and the bench. While they may not always be utilized correctly, Zidane knows how to win matches, and he knows how to win Champions Leagues. This isn't the best Real Madrid team we've ever seen, but any soccer fan knows to never count out these guys when Zidane is at the helm. Number 3. RB Leipzig F a Funny story on this one. When I first started making this list, I originally threw Leipzig in at number 11, because I didn't know how they fit into the grander scheme of this year's competition. But the more I looked, the more I fell back in love with the squad as it's constructed. I've been a fan of Leipzig for a couple years, I've been a massive fan of Yusuf Poulsen for even longer. This squad is so deep and so cohesive it's absolutely terrifying when you look at it. While young hotshot Timo Werner is tasked with bringing in the goals, he's got 19 so far between the league and the CL, 11 different players have logged an assist this season, just showcasing the fluidity of the team. I initially thought Spurs may have been able to clamp down on what seems to be a one-trick pony attack with Werner at the head. But the more I look, the more I became convinced Werner scores at will because nobody can stop it. But if you manage to do that, Marcel Sabitzer and Emil Forsberg have combined for 10 goals in the Bundesliga, and Poulsen is a multifaceted Swiss army knife of a player who is also capable of scoring should his number be called. Leipzig hasn't lost since October, and they put up more goals in a single game against Mainz than they've given up in that span. They have more challenging tasks ahead against Dortmund, Eintracht twice, and Bayern before their first match against Spurs, but the way they're playing now, it's hard not to love their chances. Number 2. Liverpool When the draw came out, I actually made the argument Liverpool have one of the most difficult tasks. But call it the tiredness or just me being a moron, I mean, it, could be either, it could be either, to be honest, but it's impossible not to recognize how good the defending champions are. Every single major piece from last year's Champions League winner is back. They've opened up the largest lead at the top of any of Europe's top five leagues, even though the Premier League continues to be the most competitive league in the world. Salah and Mane have combined for 24 goals between Premier League and Champions League. Alex Oxlade chamberlain is back from injury, and he's got three goals in three Champions League appearances, averaging one every 60 minutes. Divock Origi continues to probably be the best sub in football right now, and Virgil van Dijk, the closest thing we have in the world to a FIFA defender set on legendary when you're behind in the 90th minute, is still holding down one of the best backlines in football. Every single piece on this Liverpool team is dangerous in one way or another, and they come to the table with probably the best manager in the world right now. And if all of that wasn't enough, they're about to poach one of the breakout stars from this Champions League, Takumi Minamino from Salzburg who's tallied 9 goals and 5 assists in all competitions this year. You'd be a fool not to be scared of this Liverpool team, whoever you may be a fan of. And to just make everything worse for everyone else, Liverpool may very well have the Premier League locked up by April. Good luck. Number 1. Barcelona Now I spent all that time talking up how great Liverpool is and how scared every other team should be, yet it isn't the Reds that take the number 1 spot for me. While Barcelona certainly isn't a bad team by any stretch of the imagination, it's not like they're enjoying their best season in years or anything. Liverpool are on the most dominant run in the better part of a decade when you take league and Champions League into account. While Barcelona seem relatively pedestrian, comparatively speaking, at least to the standard that they themselves have set. They're tied in the league with Real Madrid, who I have in fourth, and their 14 points in the group stage was about average for a group winner. But it all comes down to one man. Lionel Messi. The Ballon d'Or winner is on an absolute tear, putting up numbers so mind-boggling we almost ignore it because we'd have to go to intensive therapy if we try to put them into perspective. 14 goals and 9 assists in 16 appearances between La Liga and Champions League is absolutely stupid, but since it's Messi, we all forgot mortals aren't allowed to do that every year. But don't let that take away from the fact Luis Suarez is having his best season in years, putting up 12 goals and 5 assists, while Antoine Griezmann has added 7 goals and 4 assists. Add in inspiring performances from 17-year-old Ansu Fati, plus the weekly development of Arthur, Clement Longley, and Frankie de Jong, and remember Samuel Ntiti will be back from injury at some point. And when you're thinking of all that, you forget this team has more Champions League experience than almost any squad out there, with half the players in the squad having been capped in a Champions League final, and the spine of Ter Stegen, Piquet, Busquets, and Messi having played hundreds of matches together. What may look like age to some looks like experience to me. And what looks like inexperience to some looks like youthful fire and passion to me. This Barcelona team is far from perfect, 
but they're a team that hasn't figured everything out yet, and you have the grand equalizer of the greatest player on the planet to round it all out. So let me know your rankings in the comments or on Twitter, at Griff from GA. This is a discussion that we'll continue to have for the next two months, and it's one of the most fun discussions in all of sports. It's this kind of thing that really makes soccer the beautiful game at the end of the day. So let me know what you think, and enjoy your holiday. Subscribe for everything from GA Sports now and in the future. We'll see you later. We appreciate you.